periurethral injection of platelet-rich plasma for the treatment of stress urinary incontinence. Doctors Clavijo, Bogia, Castillo, Badia, Gutierrez, Imaglia. Continence and pelvic floor dysfunction unit, Department of Fusion Medicine and Blood Bank, and Department of Gynecology and Maternity Unit, Casmu Hospital, Montevideo, Uruguay. We have no disclosures. This is a self and institutional based study. Stress urinary incontinence affects 20% of adult women. Damage to the pubic urethral and urethropelvic ligaments are the main causes of stress incontinence. Current surgical techniques attempt to restore the urethra to a position prior to ligament damage, increase urethral resistance, and improve urethral support. Periurethral injections is a treatment option that increases urethral resistance. Platelet-rich plasma is an injectable autologous substance with adhesive, hemostatic, and bulking characteristics. It has been shown to be useful in the repair of ligaments and musculoskeletal injuries. It also has been used to repair vesicovaginal fistulas and for the treatment of other pelvic conditions. Periurethral injections have been performed with autologous, heterologous, and synthetic substances. Platelet-rich plasma is autologous, has very few known complications, and is relatively inexpensive. The theoretical concept of the use of platelet-rich plasma for the treatment of stress incontinence has already been described, and the increase in urine leakage pressure after the application of periurethral platelet-rich plasma was confirmed in an anidamal model. Periurethral injection of platelet-rich plasma in females was initially described by MATS. We here describe our current technique and clinical pathway in female patients with stress urinary incontinence. We obtained IRB approval for a prospective cohort study. Inclusion criteria include clinical and urodynamic stress urinary incontinence, absence of involuntary contractions during the feeling phase, no urinary tract infections, no bladder lesions or stones, age 18 and over, and the patient being willing and able to perform ISC. The clinical pathway includes pre-injection assessment for stress incontinence, information on the procedure including options and possible risks, and the patients are instructed on suprapubic catheter care, including post-void residual measurements, and they are consented. Preoperative assessment includes history and physical examination, multi-channel urodynamics, and cystoscopy. We get avoiding diary, pad use, ICIQSF, and UDI6 questionnaires before the procedure and at days three, three weeks, three months, and then annually. Previous treatment, including pelvic muscle exercises, operations, radiotherapy, perineal sensation, and anal sphincter tone are carefully assessed and recorded. The injections are performed under general, spinal, or local anesthetic according to patient preference. We use prophylactic antibiotics. The vagina is prepped and draped as for cystoscopy. If the procedure is done with local anesthetic, we perform a periurethral block with 2% lidocaine. The platelet-rich plasma can be deployed by injections performed retrograde, either transurethral or periurethrally, or antegrade via a suprapubic axis. The transurethral route allows for a precise site of injection under vision, but goes through the urothelial lining with a theoretical risk of infection and agent extrusion. The suprapubic axis allows for an endoscopic control without the cystoscope occupying the urethral lumen and it's also used to leave a suprapubic catheter in place. Additionally, an antegrade intraoperative perfusion manometry can be performed to measure intravesical leak pressure. The platelet-rich plasma is prepared with venous blood, which is centrifuged using a soft spin. The supernatant plasma containing platelet is separated into another sterile tube. This, in turn, is centrifuged using a hard spin. The lower third of the tube contains platelet-rich plasma, and the upper two-thirds are discarded. Before injection, 
platelet rich plasma is activated with calcium to form a gel. The injection points we use are at 3, 6, 9, and 12 o'clock cystoscopic positions, where half to 2 milliliters are inject, injected at each side to obtain urethral closure at the level of the sphincter. This immediately increases urethral resistance by electricity compression. If a suprapubic catheter has been placed, the patient is discharged when recovered or immediately after local anesthetic. If no suprapubic catheter has been used, then the patient is discharged when she manages to avoid without a significant residual. We provide postoperative information, including return to physical activity, analgesia, which has really been required, and safety, including control for possible complications. We perform a telephone follow-up at day three, and then, as mentioned, at three months, six months, and annually. Avoiding diary, pad use, ICIQ, SF, and UDI6 questionnaires are repeated at each point of contact. At last follow-up, all patients reported continence in the early weeks. The technique is easily reproducible both in the preparation of platelet-rich plasma and in the injection steps. We are currently prospecting following a cohort in three centers. The procurement and preparation of platelet-rich plasma is easily accessible, reproducible, well-tolerated, and cost-effective locally at 15 to 20 percent of the cost of polyacrylate injections. Our technique and pathway for platelet-rich plasma injections is feasible, easy to learn and reproduce for a surgeon familiar with lower urinary tract endoscopy and anatomy. Thank you for your attention.